today we are going to talk a little bit about cost watch uh, activities so practically cost watch it's public or research monitoring of coastal area and uh, cost watch has a quite long history and uh, this uh, practically cost watch it's a survey uh, surveys for public observation of coastal area. Uh, coastal Watch Survey was born in uh, 1987. And uh, uh, since this time, it was updated um, by modern uh, devices like uh, geographical information system and some uh, mobile pl application, which can be used for this Coastal Watch observation. And, um, mm, uh, it work in different countries, so it was born in uh, it, it's Irish met methodology, uh, but now uh, you can uh, meet this methodology in different countries of Europe and maybe and I, I'm sure that not only in Europe. And uh, also uh, you can see a link here. Uh, it followed to the web page you can find more information about history of these activities and uh, different uh, kind of um, materials for for this uh, different kind of uh, manuals how to organize cost of watch and also link to some apl application which can be used and also it's possible to send uh, your uh, observation to this big uh, European network and uh, be part of uh, observers. And also uh, coalition of Finn Baltic also have a quite long uh, experience of coastal watch and in different uh, different part of uh, time. Um, some of organization uh, implemented uh, these activities in different part of uh, Baltic, uh, but now uh, more active in this sphere is our uh, Latvian organization, Latvian Green Movement. We already uh, heard from uh, Yanis about it uh, last uh, in our pre previous session. And also Kaliningrad region is quite active and um, organize uh, this kind of observation every uh, year. Uh, as we already discussed a lot, we have a different problem in uh, coastal area. So it is a coastal erosion and also litter pollution and uh, also different kind of uh, industrial infrastructure, ports, and so on. Uh, wastewater pollution uh, and a lot of capitals, almost all capitals of uh, Baltic countries are located on the coastal line. And uh, so we have a lot of environmental problem. Uh, and uh, what, uh, how we can help uh, this, what we can do in this case. Uh, and here we can um, see two direction of our activities. Uh, and we try to do it in uh, CCB as well. And first it's uh, research analytical work. Uh, and here <clears throat> we can contact with uh, and gathering uh, uh, some research information uh, uh, to get information from research institution and try to be a kind of conductor between science and the general public. Uh, because Coalition of Clean Baltic, it's environmental, non-governmental, non-profit organization. And we can gather this information, uh, transform it, and uh, share among the general public, among the environmental network, and so on. And uh, also very important part of our work, it can be public monitoring because involving uh, people in uh, observation is also very important. It's very good tool for ecological education and also public monitoring can uh, give us additional information for uh, scientific research and uh, for example it's very difficult to cover by uh, scientists by researchers but uh, uh, ordinary people can help 
a lot and uh, they don't need to have some special knowledge, but they can also contribute in this process. Uh, uh, we call it uh, citizen science and I think it's very good approach uh, to to work with people and uh, to share environmental knowledge among them. Uh, and uh, some words about research and analytical work. Uh, CCB um, preparing uh, different kind of reports about uh, state of coastal area, try to get the information from different uh, part of Baltic and try to give some recommendation about Baltic coastal management and uh, get the good and bad examples of uh, coastal management in our region and also as we are um, observers in Helcom, we also prepare different kind of documents to the Helcom. Uh, one more uh, point which I want to highlight for you today, it's a Helcom hotspots. So uh, Helcom uh, hotspots, it's a list of significant pollution sites around the Baltic Sea and it was established in 1992. And here uh, on the map, you can see uh, different symbols, uh, blue and red. Uh, blue, it's already deleted hotspots, and uh, uh, red, it's still active uh, hotspots uh, in the region. And here uh, we can see different sorts of pollutions, for example, agriculture, and you can go to, to uh, Helcom webpage and check, for example, your region and just take a look what kind of uh, hotspots, uh, what kind of uh, dangerous infrastructure you might have in your region, or you can also give this information and if, for example, if you have some new project in your area and you are not so happy about it, you can also uh, send that information for us, for example, and we will inform Helcom about it and um, update this um, Helcom hotspots. Um, unfortunately, for example, it's quite an old report and I hope in the future we will update this information because uh, I'm sure that a lot of changes happen uh, last about 10 years. And maybe you will help us uh, in this work as well. And uh, if we will go to public monitoring, and uh, I want to go deeper to public monitoring approach uh, and to uh, talk to you about Coastal Watch methodology. Uh, it's a survey and uh, it's quite a classical version of survey for post watch it's based of uh, irish methodology but it's adapted for baltic sea region and here uh, you can see survey which consists of different blocks uh, first blocks about obser observer and general information about the uh, area of observation so for example what what is nearest settlement and uh, what is a uh, country uh, part of the country and so on uh, also this survey uh, includes uh, information about inflows or savage if we have some in this area so how it look like if you want to observe some territory you can uh, go uh, for uh, you can go to some sea site and choose about uh, 200 meters for observation and in this 200 meters you can uh, count how many inflows you have for example, and in what condition it is. Is it some source of pollutions or uh, maybe some oils uh, in the water? And uh, uh, another block, uh, it's uh, information about splash zone. Uh, can you find some animals or plants uh, or dead or alive animals you can find? Uh, and also information about uh, litter or maybe other source of pollution. Uh, and in survey, you can also add information about some threats. For example, if you have some touristic facilities, uh, restaurants or hotels, which can also be 
pollutants, uh, you can add this information. I can show uh, how look uh, now our survey. It's like a temporary survey which we used for our previous coastal watch days last autumn. Uh, now it's look like this. And uh, it's very, you don't need to have some special knowledge in um, uh, botany, for example, or uh, some zoological knowledge. Uh, you can just uh, take this uh, survey and fill it and send. Uh, now we have only Google um, Forms for this, but uh, by, by the end of summer, I hope we will have a new version of Clean Games application and we will have a special part for Cost Watch and with some gamification. And we hope that it will be more interesting for our observers and for uh, and uh, like easy uh, for, for using. Uh, what can so it's very like basic classic version of cost watch include all uh, this um, information which you can feel what cost watch can include else so if you want to go deeper to some observation you can do uh, bio indication for example to do biodiversity monitoring or you can do plastic monitoring and here we have a different kind of methodology. For example, we have methodology for marine litter monitoring. Uh, so in this case, you just need to collect uh, all litter uh, which you can find in this 200 meters of your um, area. And uh, you, you need to find out what kind of litter uh, it is. Uh, is it plastic bottles or maybe plastic bag? And uh, you can um, you can try to to find uh, what kind of sources can be. Maybe it's some uh, wastewater. Maybe it's uh, also from some touristic uh, infrastructure. And uh, after that, you can do some analysis and uh, maybe to um, try to negotiate with some touristic facilities or maybe try to find uh, what's happened with this uh, wastewater while it's in, on the beach and try to solve it somehow or maybe inform your municipality and try to find the source of this uh, litter. And also we have a microplastic pollution methodology. Uh, it's maybe a little bit more difficult uh, because you need to um, to do a different kind of job for for example you need to uh, have some special um, filter for, for this and also microscope but if you are interesting or maybe you have some uh, observers who want to try this methodology it's also possible and you can find our methodology uh, using these links in the presentation. And also one more methodology for plastic monitoring, it is brand audit. And uh, my colleagues, Victoria, will tell a little bit more about this. And uh, uh, I know that some of, uh, some of you um, were interested in this and we call sometimes it's like smart cleanups when we not only collect, or, and separate garbage, but we also do some research and try to analyze and try to find a way how we can solve this problem uh, to go uh, a little bit more deeper in this uh, solution. 